Hello, this is Mr. Bass. Welcome to problems 109 to 115. Uh, let's go ahead and start with question 109. If f of x equals 3 minus the absolute value of x and g of x equals the cube root of x plus 5, then find, and it's just going to ask for some different values of each of the functions. So just make sure that you're paying attention. Uh, there is an f of x function and then there is a g of x function. So um, you got to make sure you're plugging it into the correct one. So the first one is a, which is f of negative 5. So you're going to plug in negative 5 wherever there is an x. And then you're just going to evaluate that. So f of negative 5 is equal to 3 minus. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. And so therefore f of negative 5 is equal to negative 2. Now remember what this means. The input is negative 5 and the output is negative 2. Now you don't need to write it like that, but just be aware of when you're finding that, that, that is what you're finding, is the output when the input is negative 5. All right, on the next one, we have the g function. So we're looking for g of 64. So you're going to plug in 64 for x. So that's the cube root of 64 plus 5. Remember, the cube root of 64, what that means is what number times itself three times would give you 64. And so therefore that number is 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So therefore the cube root of 64 is 4. So 4 plus 5 is then 9. So g of 64 is equal to 9. C is f of 0. So you're going to plug 0 in for x. So 3 minus the absolute value of 0. Well, the absolute value of 0 is 0. And so 3 minus 0 is 3. So f of 0 is equal to 3. d. d is another f function. So f of 2 is equal to 3 minus the absolute value of 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2, so 3 minus 2 is 1. So f of 2 is equal to 1. e is back to the g function, g of negative 8. g of negative 8 is equal to the cube root of negative 8 plus 5. So once again, what number times itself 3 times would give you a negative 8? And that would be negative 2. So negative 2 plus 5, so g of negative 8 is equal to 3. And then the last one, f. This is g of 0. So g of 0 is equal to the cube root of 0 plus 5. And the cube root of 0 is what number times itself 3 times gives you 0, and that would just be 0. So 0 plus 5 is 5. So g of 0 is equal to 5. So that's how you evaluate functions. Question 110, multiple choice. Which equation below could represent a tile pattern that grows by 3 and has 9 tiles in figure 2? So what I would do, um, your equations over here are not written in the form that we typically write a tile pattern, which is given the starting value and the growth. So we would typically put it in y equals mx plus b form. Let's start there and then see if we can match it up with one of those four choices. So we know it grows by 3, so we know the growth, so that would be 3x plus b. And then we have to figure out what the starting value is. It grows by 3. We know that um, figure 2 has 9 tiles. So let's think about that. Figure 2 has 9. It grows by 3. So we could go this way, but we need to go back to figure 1. Uh, sorry, figure 0. So we'll subtract 3 until we get back there, and it looks like it's also 3. So our equation is y equals 3x plus 3. Which one of those equations, A, B, C, and D, are equivalent to this? Okay, so it looks like their X and Y are all on the same side. So what if we subtracted 3X to both sides from this equation? And then compare it. So that would be negative 3X plus Y equals 3. So which one is that? Negative 3X plus Y equals 3. And that looks like choice C. Question 111, solve the systems of equation below using the method of your choice. Check your solutions if possible. So let's go ahead and get started on A. A is set up for substitution. You can substitute the 7 minus 2x in for y. So that would be 2x plus 7 minus 2x is equal to 10. 
uh, 2x plus 7 minus 2x. So it does look like the x's when you combine them will cancel, and you're left with 7 is equal to 10, which is not true. So therefore, this would be a no solution. Now, once again, it says check your solutions if possible. Even though we can't plug something back in, we can still check our solutions by taking the second equation and solving for y and comparing the two lines because we know if the slope or sorry we know if the um, the answer is no solution then we should have two lines that are parallel that never intersect and so if you compare this equation y equals negative 2x plus 10 to the equation that was given y equals and I'm going to rewrite it just so the slope is first negative 2x plus 7 you see that the slopes are the same so this negative 2 are the same, so that's why they don't intersect, but also that your y-intercepts are different. And since the y-intercepts are different, it's two different lines with the same slope, which means they're parallel. So that's just a, a way that we can check even though we can't plug the numbers back in. B is set up for, once again, it looks like substitution because you have x equals 3y minus 1. So we'll go to your second equation, 4 times 3y minus 1 minus 2y is equal to 16. Use your distributive property. Combine your like terms. Add 4 to the other side and divide by 10. So it looks like we get y equals 2. We can then go back and plug that into the equation x equals 3 times y or 3 times 2 minus 1. 6 minus 1 is 5. So it looks like we get a solution of 5 comma 2, and we could go ahead and check that one by plugging that back into each of those. So this would be 3 times y, or 3 times 2 minus 1 is equal to 5. 6 minus 1 is 5, or 5 is equal to 5, so that checks. And then the second one, 4 times 5 minus 2 times 2 is equal to 16, or 20 minus 4 is 16. So you can see 16 is equal to 16. So we were able to check our solution and the ordered pair 5 comma 2 is correct. Question 112. Decide if the statement below is true or false. Justify your response. The expression quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 1 is equivalent to the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity 3 plus x. Now we could look at this and just multiply these two out by using the generic rectangle of the distributive property and compare the results. We can also look at what it's, it's asking and you can see that the x minus 1 is still being multiplied. The thing that changed was the x plus 3 became 3 plus x. So really the question is, can you add two numbers in a different order and still get the same thing? And you can just think about this. If I take 3 plus 4, is that the same thing as 4 plus 3? Sure, it doesn't matter the order that you add two numbers. Um, that's called the commutative property. So... It does appear that they two are equivalent because 3 plus x and x plus 3 are the same thing, but let's just go ahead and go through and multiply just to kind of verify what it is that we are thinking is true. So x times x is x squared, x times minus 1 is minus 1x, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 1 is, is negative 3. And remember, the other thing that we can do is create the generic rectangle. You have x plus 3 and x minus 1. You still get the same thing. You got your x squared, your 3x, and your minus 1x with your minus 3 at the end. So when I combine these, I get x squared plus 2x minus 3. And we're trying to figure out if it is equivalent to this statement. So x times 3 is 3x. x times x, x squared, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and negative 1 times x is negative 1x. So they're definitely in a different order here, but you're still going to add your 3x and negative 1x to 2x, and your x squared and your minus 3 don't change. And so if you look, are these two statements equivalent? And yes, they are. So decide if the statement below is true or false. It is true. All right, and justify your response. And really our justification is the two forms are equivalent when multiplied out. Question 113. Find each of the following products by drawing and labeling a generic rectangle or by using the distributive property. Alright, so kind of just talked about this on the last one, but you have x plus 5 times x plus 4. So once again, you can use the generic rectangle or the distributive property. 
x times x is x squared, x times 4 is 4x, 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 4 is 20. Combine your like terms and you get x squared plus 9x plus 20. So that is equivalent to the original problem x plus 5 times x plus 4. Remember, this is written as a product of the length and width, and this is the sum of its parts. So there's your answer for that one, though. All right, on B, we have 2y times y plus 3, and this is just one of your distributive properties with only one term. So 2y times y is 2y squared, and 2y times 3 is 6y. And so that's it for that one. Question 114. Solve each equation below for the indicated variable, if possible. Show all steps. So it looks like on part A, or the first question, we have one variable, 2x plus 22 equals 12, and we are solving for the only variable on it, which is x. So we're going to subtract 22, get the variable term on one side and the constant on the other, then divide by 2, and we get x equals negative 5. We could also check our answer if we wanted to. This would be 2 times the x value of negative 5 plus 22. And if this is correct, we should get 12. So negative 10 plus 22 is equal to 12. So it does check. All right, we will go back to the next one. We're going to the next one, which is b, solve for y. Now on this one, we have two variables. We have 2x minus y equals 3. So since we have two variables and we're only solving for one of them, we're not going to have an actual answer. We're going to have a, an expression in terms of uh, y will be in terms of x. So we want to solve for y. Now it is a negative y, so I might do this a little different than what some of you might have thought. I'm going to add y to the other side. That way my y is a positive instead of a negative, and then I'm going to subtract 3 to the other side. So 2x minus 3 is equal to y, or y is equal to 2x minus 3. So once again, you haven't solved in terms of finding an actual value for the y in terms of a number, but it's in terms of x. So y is equal to 2x minus 3. You're putting it basically in slope-intercept form. Um, C, we're going to go to solve for x. 2x plus 15 is equal to 2x minus 15. So there's only one variable, and the variable we're solving for is the x variable. So we're going to get the x's on the same side. Subtract 2x, but what we notice is when we go to subtract 2x, it cancels it on both sides, and you're left with 15 is equal to negative 15, which is not a true statement. So we have no solution on part C. Um, and so the last one is D. Uh, solve for Y. So once again, really writing this in slope-intercept form. So we want to subtract the 6X. 2Y equals negative 6X plus 10. And then we're going to divide everything through by 2. So Y is equal to negative 3X plus 5. And that's how you solve for each of the variables. And the last question here, 115. Consecutive numbers are integers that are in order without skipping, such as 3, 4, and 5. Find three consecutive numbers with a sum of 54. Now we could, you know, possibly just play around and just start adding consecutive numbers up until we get to 54, which is a possibility. If the sum gets larger, that might be a little bit more difficult. So what we could do... In terms of setting this up, we could say let x equal the first number in that list, which means if it's consecutive, then my next number I would just add 1 to, and that would give me my second consecutive number. And then if I added 1 again, that would give me my third consecutive number or integer. Okay? So that's one way that we could set it up, and since it's a sum, then we could take each of these individual numbers and add them up, and we know that the sum is equivalent to 54. And then we could combine our like terms to get 3x plus 3 equals 54. Subtract 3. 3x is equal to 51 divided by 3, and x is equal to 17. So... 
17 would be my first number, x plus 1. If you add 1 to 17, you get 18. And if you add 2 to 17, you get 19. So it does say find 3 consecutive numbers with a sum of 54. And so our 3 numbers would be 17 plus 18 plus 19 will add up to 54. So once again, our 3 numbers, 17, 18, and 19.